Hey everyone, so I think I'm live now. Um, so I asked if we should use VS Code and Copen and just one person responded. So I guess we're gonna go ahead and use VS Code. Um, so I don't know if you guys have already been here when I created the last uh, portfolio, which was using Flexbox. And now I'm going to be using um, CSS Grids, but first let me go ahead and tweet this that I'm live because I haven't done it yet. Um, Oh, interesting that it's like different over here. I just selected it, I already have it ready. And I'm just gonna tweet that. Okay. I think I did. Okay, cool. I was hoping that there would be a preview. Hello, hi, thank you for joining. Okay, so we have that ready. Um, this is what we are going to be building. No, I'm sharing the screen. Oh. <laughs> I totally forgot to uh, share the screen here. Um, share, share screen. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, VS Code. Okay, sounds good. We're gonna use VS Code. Okay, so I already have VS Code open. Um, this is what we are building. This is what we built last time. How do I, why isn't it? Oh, I guess because I'm so zoomed in here. Let me zoom out really quick. It's so stretched out. This is what we created with Flexbox. It's not letting me, hold on. Let me zoom in, zoom out more. Zoom out a little bit too much. Okay, this is what we made last time. And we used Flexbox. We just created a side one and side two. We made a wrapper around the entire thing and said display flex. And this is what happened. So um, this is live right now. We are live. This is not pre-recorded. So it's even more nerve wracking. <laughs> um, so we're going to do the same exact thing with grids. And um, at first I was thinking that it would be way too complicating, but it's actually very simple. So. I'm going to move this away, but we are we are going to be referencing it so that we know what we're creating um, to reference the cards, like the color and everything. So I'm gonna go over here and move it. And just a second, I need to zoom back in because it's so zoomed out. Okay. No, you probably can't see my screen right now, but... Um, Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I already created a folder for for this project. It's just called Portfolio Grid. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you just right click and select New Folder. And I already added the image that I'll be using in here. I renamed it to Profile Pick so that it's easy to remember. And so we are going to go into VS Code and select this folder. All we do is open folder, go into desktop, portfolio grid and select folder. Okay, I'm going to exit out of the get started section. I'm going to create a new file and call it HTML, I mean, sorry, index.html. And we are going to create another one and call it style.css. This is how we will be designing everything. Oops, did I need to do that? Okay, making sure you guys see my screen that it's all right. Thank you, yeah, this is Dennis's wallpaper. <laughs> he got it from um, a YouTube, one of those lo-fi chill videos. Okay, I'm going to close out the CSS for now so that all we have is open is the HTML. So I'm gonna click shift and um, the exclamation point. I mean, the number one, which is also exclamation point and click enter. And in here, I am going to add, just a second. Um, in here, I'm going to add the CSS link. So it's going to be, uh, link, no, hold on just a second. What was it? I always forget this one for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, it is a link rail style sheet. Okay, I need to like memorize it on a card or something. <laughs> I 
Okay. Rel style sheet. Oops. And then I am going to add the link itself, which is style.css. That's what we just created um, when we were right here. That's what I'm referencing. So I'm going to close that out. Make sure we add a closing tag. And I'm also going to add the font. Actually, no, I'm not going to add it yet so that we can just get started right away. So as you guys can see over here that we created, let me change it really quick again. Zoom out. So we created um, a page wrapper when we were making it in Flex and we'll be doing the same thing here. And we will also create a side one and a side two. And the reason you need to do that is because um, if you want it to look like this, if you don't, then it will be like way too, um, like all of the boxes are going to be even and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So let's go back in here and create that, um, that class of page wrapper. So in VS Code, I don't know if you can, if you knew this, I don't know if it's an extension or not, actually, I just figured this out. But um, you can just, if you're creating a div class, then all you do is click period and then start typing the name of the div that you want to create and click enter and it will write it out for you instead of writing all of this out. Um, so I'm actually going to call it um, page wrapper. And this is all in the HTML. This is all exactly the same as we did in the last uh, live stream with, with Flexbox. So I'm not changing anything at all for grids. So if you wanted to watch that one also, you can see and compare it. Um, so then I'm going to create a side one. And um, another one is going to be a side two. So these are the two different sections over here. This is side one and this is side two. As we're coding it, it's all going to be um, in a column first, like on top of each other. So we're gonna go into side one and first we are going to create this section. So everything is going to be separated into wrappers. This will be a wrapper, uh, this will be a wrapper, this, this will be, and by wrapper I mean like a div and I'm going to name it wrapper. This will be its own div and this will be its own div. And we are doing that because they are technically boxes and we want to separate them all. So if I didn't put it into a div, it would be hard to um, separate them into these little squares over here. So we're gonna go back in here and I'm going to create the div of just a wrapper. And within wrapper, what we have first in the first wrapper is an H1 tag and then an image and then an h2 tag. This is the h2 tag, and then a uh, paragraph tag, and then links within the paragraph tag right here. So let's start with the h1 tag. So type h1. Um, instead of making the name the main thing, I'm going to have it the um, job title basically. So front end developer. Then we will add the image tag and its image source uh, profile. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. Come back. Okay, I guess not. Dot JPEG. Add the closing tag. Let's save it. Um, and let's look at it really quick. So I'm going to go back into the folder that we created on the desktop and we just select this. Um, the index HTML. So we have it right here, it's ginormous, but we are going to, um, we are going to minimize that as we get into the CSS code. Okay, next we had the H2 tag, which was the name. And then we have the paragraph tag, which said contact and within the paragraph tag, we have the links. Um, I'm going to just put a hashtag right now. The first one is LinkedIn. And then I'm going to copy and paste this three more times. 
the link itself. One, two, and three. And I'm going to change it to um, Twitter and the YouTube. Oops, spelled that wrong. YouTube. So as you can see, these are YouTube, like all of these w words are within an A tag, which is a link. And over here, you just go and copy paste your URL to these links and, and, and replace it with the hashtag. So the hashtag is just a placement holder. And, and this is all within the paragraph tag. So let's save it and let's see what it looks like. And here it is right here, and it's all within one line. So if I, if I did this, if I hit enter and put it into a different line, it will actually um, show up differently. Oh, that's weird. It didn't do it here. When I was doing this last time, it did. Okay, I guess it doesn't matter, but I'm still going to keep it in one line. Okay, we are done with that part. Now we are going to go outside of this div and create another div, the same exact thing. We're going to create wrapper. And the next one is an H1. I'll show you guys here. So an H1. So every wrapper is going to start with an H1 and then go into either a list item or a paragraph. And then this one, it starts with an H2, H1 and then H2 and then paragraph. So let's go in here. We are going, this is going to be our first list item. So let's go in and start making it. So I'm going to first create the H1 tag, which is going to say experience. You can write what you think is better, like job history or where I worked or something. So now I'm going to create a UL tag and then an LI. And within the LI, I'm going to start writing out um, photographer. 2010 to 2018, I was a, um, I had my own photography business since high school and I actually went to the Art Institute of Portland for that. Um, I don't know if that's going to select everything or not. Okay, cool. And then I started doing graphic design for a digital marketing company and um, yeah, I'm still doing this <laughs> for Dennis. I'm, I create all of his thumbnails and um, infographics and everything. Um, and then for his courses as well. And then uh, creative director for Dennis. I'm just going to leave Dennis out. Um, and this was 2018 to present. Um, if you have more, obviously add it in. I'm just going to leave three for everything so that I'm not taking up too much time. So we are done with this. And as you can see, it is going to create these bullet points down here. Okay, so I need to add a space between the A, the a tag over here because they're touching, the links are touching. So as you can see over here, it created bullet points when we create an LI tag, a list item. So a list item always has to be within the UL tag. So let's go in here. And it was the LinkedIn and Twitter that were connected. Let's refresh that. Okay, there we go. Now it was fixed. I realize I'm like leaning in so much and this might look really funny. Um, actually, I guess I'm small on a small screen anyway. Okay, let's continue. Now we are creating the skills and this is also going to be a list item. So we are going outside of the div wrapper. We are creating another div wrapper. And in here, we are going to start with H1 again. It's going to be say skills. And then we are going to create another UL and LI tags. So you can start adding your skills in here to add Photoshop. I'm going to copy paste this two more times. I'm going to change this to Lightroom and 
HTML and CSS. If I'm talking too quiet, let me know. I start to like, when I zone out, I pretty much forget that I'm even like, you guys are even here, <laughs> that I'm not, I have to teach as I'm coding, um, I start to zone out. So, okay, we have this. Now we are going to move on to side two. So we just finished side one. We are going to get outside of this side one wrapper, move into the side two wrapper and start with um, the about me wrapper. So we ended, so this is the ending of the div wrapper. As you can see, it starts and ends right here. This is the ending of side one wrapper over here. We can follow this line and see that it's right here, side one. So now we are moving on to side two. So let's go into side two, create the div of wrapper and create the h1 tag. It's going to say about me. Now we are going to create paragraph tag and I'm just gonna get some lorem ipsum or I guess I could just copy paste this right here since I already have it. Selecting too much. Okay, I'll just add the I in myself. Let's see, does it want to be selected? Move over. And save that. Okay, that's it for the about me wrapper. Now we're going to go outside of this wrapper and create another wrapper. This one is going to be the blog posts. This could be anything you want. I made it into blog posts if you had anything that you wanted to share. Um, and then we are going to create projects. So we are almost done with HTML. We just have a few more things to type out and we are done. So let's go into the wrapper and create an H1 tag and call it a blog post, or you can write articles or you know things I wrote or something. And we are going to create a UL list item again, LI tags, and in the LI, um, this list item, I'm going to create a class of card because we have multiple list items and I need to make this one different so that I can actually style this one itself. So in here, this is a list item, this is a list item, this one and this one. But this is the only one where I want to actually add um, the styling to it to make it look like a card. So that's why we have to add a um, div to it. Yeah, I know. I need to. Um, I mean, what would you prefer to change it to instead of divs? Like, if you can, uh, if you can reference something, I guess. Like, what would I name it to instead of like div wrapper or whatever? I would love to know because I was actually thinking the same thing. Let's see. And yes, I know it should be Ivanova, not Ivanova. But I am in America, and in America, it's considered a different last name um, from Ivanov. So it would mean that Dennis and I um, don't share a last name. So if I was in Russian, then yes, that would be. Um, and yes, I am a beginner, so please let me know because I was actually thinking that, what can I change it instead of um, divs, but I couldn't think of anything. Like there is no like main, you know, or there is no um, like menu or anything like that. So I guess what would be the other semantics if anyone can please tell me since you guys are calling me out right now it would be nice if you can actually let me know what it's supposed to be instead that would be awesome okay so in here we're going to add card and i'm going to add an h2 tag and i'm going to call it where were we I'm going to call it just why I chose CSS. Then we are going to add a paragraph tag and I'm going to say, um, let me just grab some of this. Just add filler text for now. Okay, then we're going to go outside of this paragraph and I'm going to add a link. I'm just gonna lead it to nothing for now and I'm gonna write view more. I'm going to copy paste this two more times. And I'm going to leave it as that for now. Then I'm going to create another div. A wrapper 
and then I'm going to call it H1 tag and call it, um, what was it? Oh, projects. Another UL tag and then LI. And then I'm going to add, um, what was it in here? What did we have? So I have the project name and then a link right underneath it. So it's going to be H2, not H1. H2, and it's going to say, um, so I made a to-do list app for Dennis for one of his videos. And then I'm going to add the link, leave it as a hashtag, and write view. Oh, and here I want to change it to read more since they are blog posts, not view more. Read and read. And in here is view, actual copy, and then paste this two more times. Okay. And I'm going to change this to Twitter clone, and then um, I had my preset website. Oops, keep writing it wrong. Okay, we are done here. And just learn about section and article. Yeah, maybe, I guess, if it's easier for um, HTML, I mean, like the website to read. Um, yeah, I wasn't like taught any different. Like I said, I'm learning from um, YouTube and stuff and I haven't seen too much of HTML semantics unless it's for something specific. Again, like an obvious thing like header, menu, footer. We don't have any of that in this portfolio website. But um, obviously, in, if I am building websites like that, that is what I use. But in this case, I couldn't find anything to use besides section. But again, it's the same exact thing. So um, I'm not sure what the difference would be. OK, so we're going to go and go into CSS. So let's first look at what we created so that we know how it looks. And here we are. So this is all very, you know, spaced out, looks very bad. So let's go in here and start styling the CSS. I'm going to open up the CSS file. And I'm going to select the asterisks and add the universal styling. So this is for the entire page over here. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> I will. Uh, grow into that later. Okay, so these padding zero, margin zero, uh, box sizing. I got interrupt for like two seconds. I see huh? people in the chat after I go to a meeting right now. Okay. Uh, semantic HTML, let me bring that in here. Uh, it's nice, it offers readability for users but it really has no purpose, so I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, it's there's two things about it. One, other people coding or seeing, if you're working on a project together, can understand it. And another is it does help search engines, but there's really no evidence that it really impacts any search results uh, at all. So I wouldn't worry about it. I see people really push it. It's um, it's a trend. I mean, it's, it's a good trend. It's something that we're probably gonna stick with, but don't stress it. I just see people in the chat and I had to get over that because I see people saying that it's not good to use divs. Totally fine to use divs, don't worry about it. I personally don't even use semantic HTML, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Just want to back you up there, girl. Wait, thank you, you almost spilled my <laughs> coffee all over me. <laughs> no, no, I oh, got yeah. it, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna move this mic back over. So, okay. Now in here, I'm going to add, um, this is the fun part. I love the CSS part of the of this because I love seeing how the code starts to change and look nice. Okay, so we're going to go in here and let's go to Google Fonts. And they have a lot of great fonts that you can check out. So um, I do have to kind of um, hurry up because we do have a flight to catch soon um, in a couple of hours. So. Okay, I use the 
on a Rubik. I'm going to select it. I'm going to get rid of this. This is what Dennis was using, I think, in his last project. Um, so I'm going to go in here and select. You go over here and select the regular 400. And then you just copy paste this section right here. I selected a link. So I'm just copying this. And all you do is add it into your HTML to into the head section. So let's go over here and add it into here and paste it. So it's going to be a couple lines of code. You're going to see it starts here and ends over there. So we are going to save that. Make sure you're saving it. And um, as you're working on the CSS, make sure that you correctly spell all of this and add it in here. Otherwise, it will not work. So OK, going to exit out of that. Let's go back in here. And we are going to go into font, family. And I am going to select the font that we chose, which is Rubik. And write sans serif. Oops. Saved it. Okay, now we're going to style the page wrapper. And this is where we are going to add the grid. So I'm selecting the page wrapper div that we made. And I'm going to add a width to it first. I'm going to add a width of 960 pixels. And I am going to say display grid. Um, for the eight, for the Flexbox one, I think I did either 960 or 1,000 something pixels. I don't really remember. Um, but you can go, but you can go um, and check it out in the code pen link. I added it in the description below. So here, instead of flex, we are saying display grid. And this is where it, it becomes a little bit different. So what we do is we write grid template template columns. And here, I am just going to say repeat to 1FR. So what this does is instead of writing 1FR, 1FR, which is fine too, and that's probably less, <laughs> less writing actually, but uh, we are repeating 1FR, which is a sizing metric for, for grids. And it's only used in grids, the FR um, typing, I guess. Um, and we are spanning it over two columns. So I only want it to go I only want it to go for two columns. So we are using one and um, two, and they are going to be in equal size. So we have that here. Let's save it and let's see. Oh, it changed it. And here we have the two columns. So now we have to make this picture a lot smaller because it's all crushed in like this and we don't want it to look like that, obviously. So let's go in um, just quickly add the sizing to the image and I'm going to move this really quickly. It's kind of in my way. Can't see the keyboard. I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixels and a height of 200 pixels. I think in the flex one, I use 300 pixels. I might do that here too, but for now, I'll just do 200 pixels. Okay. So it's a lot better looking now and we want to center this. So the way we are going to center it, is I'm going to use margin zero auto. See it now it's centered and I don't like that it's touching the top of it right here. And I am going to bring it down lower. So I'm going to say padding pop. And I'm going to add a padding of like 50 pixels maybe. If you like that might look good. That looks pretty good. Okay. So that's basically it, but obviously we are going to be styling this and um, making it look better, making it look like this. So um, again, I did this all in the Flexbox live stream and I have it all in my code pen if you want to look at the differences and everything, but we're going to start designing this. So first I'm gonna go into the div of wrappers and start separating all of these divs because they are all crunched in on each other. Um, so let's go 
in here and select the wrapper. And I'm going to add a margin bottom to them of, let's do like 10 pixels. I might need a little bit more, but let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna add more. I think I'm gonna add like 15 or 20. Let's try 20 pixels. We're also gonna make this responsive, by the way. Um, it's definitely different um, than Flexbox. When we made it in Flexbox, the media query was a lot shorter. A media query in for a grid is a little bit longer, but not too much longer. So let's go in here. Now I'm going to add um, a margin to the headers. Let me actually go in here. So H1 margin bottom, I'll do like five pixels. Oops, five pixels. And I'm going to change yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm, going, I'm also going to change the font size. This is all much too big. Um, is the video buffering? Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I heard that too about the SEO part. Um, and that's why, like I said, when I'm creating things with like with a menu and a header and a footer and a main and all that stuff, um, so what you guys are saying is that nobody uses divs anymore. They just use the section semantic, like the tag, instead of div. Um, if that's the case, I'm, um, I was not aware of that. I guess maybe because the tutorials I'm watching, they're still um, different. Um, I don't know if you can do this in React. I do not code in React. Um, Dennis would know, so maybe he'll answer that question for you. Um, um, yeah, I'm not using any frameworks or anything like that. I'm still using just vanilla CSS. So, okay, so let's go in here. I'm going to change the font size of the H1. And I'm going to make it, let's say, 24 pixels and see what that looks like. Okay, that's better. Now we want to change it for the H2 tag. And I'm going to make the H2 tag 18 pixels. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, and then the paragraph tag too, I want to make it a little bit smaller, maybe like 14 pixels. See it? Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, so... Now we are going to add some styling, like um, getting rid of the list item in the LLI tag. So let's do, um, when we select the LLI, it's list style none. And that gets rid of the bullet points. And I want to leave for the A tags, I want to leave the underline. So I'm just gonna change the color of it. So, so that it's not this bright blue color, but we do still want it to stand out enough so that people know that it's a link. Um, so I'm going to select an A tag and I'm going to change the color to, let's see what they have here. You can choose anything you want. I'm going to go for something, um, almost like a black, but not really so that it's, you can still tell that it's a link. I mean, it's underlined, so you can tell, but some people might think that the underline might just be an emphasis. Let's do like midnight blue. I guess it might not be too different. Actually, that looks pretty good. That looks a lot better. Okay, I'm also going to add um, spacing between the list items because they're like, they're a little bit too close to each other. I want to add some space there. So I'm going to go in here and add, um, let's add padding, bottom five pixels. 
Let's check it out. So I think you can also do a line height, but the line height didn't add too much space. So I would just change it to padding bottom um, when I was creating it originally. So line height works a lot better. So this applied to all of the list items over here. Okay, so now we are going to start designing. Oh, we wanted to add um, an underline also underneath the H1 tags. So I'm going to say text decoration underline. So as you can see, there's all these different selections you can use. Um, I'm just going to select underline. I'm refreshing so much, but um, like I said, I want you guys to see what's going on as we're coding it. So this is what we have so far. We are looking really similar to this right now. So now let's start creating these cards and that's it. And then we just have to make it uh, mobile responsive. So let's go in here and start making the cards. What we do is select the card div and I'm going to give it a background color and I'm going to get the color out of uh, the over here so that I don't have to go search for a new color. Um, here, let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm selecting. Again, this code pen link is um, in the description below if you guys wanted to see it. It's right here, background color, it's F1, F1, F1. So I'm gonna go here to add it. And I'm going to give it a padding of 10 pixels and a border radius of five pixels. So here we have that. So now we wanna add a margin to them so that they are not stacked on top of each other like this. We want them to be separated. Let's move this over. We want them to have some space in between. So I'm gonna go in here and give it a margin bottom of let's say 10 pixels that might be too much but let's try it out i feel like that's pretty good maybe a little bit too much no i think that's pretty good i'm going to leave it like that um, i'm also going to change the link tags to be a little bit smaller it looks too big it looks a little bit overwhelming so let's change the font size to Let's do 14 pixels, just like the paragraph tags. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, here we are. And now let's just work on the, now let's work on the responsiveness. So um, yeah, I know I should use the live server. Um, this is Dennis's setup. I thought he had it, maybe it just turned off or something. I don't know, or maybe it was disabled because I know he has live server also. Okay, so now let me show you guys how it looks right now while it's not responsive. Let me just make this a little bit taller. And wow, this is really, so right now it's just like disappearing, but we want it to, we want it to start laying on top of each other. So what we do, as you, as we saw how we made it in grid, we made it, um, two columns with one FR each. Now we're going to change it to just one column of one FR. So let's go in here and add, is this little too zoomed in? Let me know if that's better. Okay, I'm gonna add a media query of um, 750. Oh, it's supposed to be max width. 750 pixels, whoops, 750. And we are going to select the page wrapper and I'm going to give it a width of, I think it was, let's say like 95%. And we are going to change the grid 
template columns. So what it what this is doing is what this is doing is just um, if I'm selecting this here, so I'm saying at this size, change these things right here. So I don't have to say display grid again because it's already at a display of grid. So I'm just saying instead of grid template columns repeat to one of R, I'm just saying I'm saying change it to grid template columns one of R. And instead of max width of of 950 pixels or whatever we had, um, I'm saying change it to 95% of the page itself. So see it and let's see how it works okay now it went down and for side two i'm probably going to make it a little bit smaller because because it's actually i think we'll leave it because i don't want it to hmm I'm trying to think what would be better we could change it to like 80 percent and this stays everything stays to the left we could change this to put in the middle but that looks really funny so i'm not going to do that um concept of collab cold span and row span i haven't tried that and for me i found that this worked but i will look into that and see if that would be better so we did make it responsive, but I do want to see um, and select side two and see if changing the width to, um, let's say, 85% would look better. Let's see it. I feel like that looks a little bit better. It's not so stretched out. The screen is lagging a little bit. I feel like that looks better, but at the same time, I feel like it would be better if it just fit all the way across. Yeah, I think I'm gonna change it back to 95%. I'm just going to delete that. Um, and the picture is a little bit too big, but again, it's not going much smaller, so I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, this is, the this is the profile website with uh, using grids and again you can check it out in flexbox i also have the grid version here on um on my code pen let me zoom in a little bit more so you can go into collections and this is my the portfolio website flexbox first grid so here's the flexbox here's the grid as you can see they look the same i just didn't add all like here i actually changed the skills here i left it the same so it's little things like that but um you can try them out here and look at all of the code and um change it up how you want it and yeah so i hope that was helpful um and if there's any questions you guys can ask. Oh, I wanted to show you guys also what it looks like if we get rid of the side one and side two. It will look completely different. So it's really important to add that. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select this div and delete it. Now I have to go to closing tag, delete that, delete side two. So when I originally built this without a side one and side two to separate them, it was not, um, where did it go? It was, um, well, I guess we'll see right now. So this is what it does. It creates even grids. So here, if we give it a background color to each wrapper, so I'm gonna go into the wrapper, you'll see what's going on. So background color, Let's do um, like this, just selecting something random. Whoops, didn't mean to select OBS. So, okay. And we also need to um, give it a grid gap. So I'm gonna give it a gap of 20 pixels. 
So this is what happens here when we don't do the side one, side two. So you can see it still created the two columns like we wanted and they're even, but I don't want it to have all the space. So what it does is it reflects off of whatever is next to it. So for example, in this case, skills box is the same size as about me box because the about me box is, is like longer. So it's adapting to that. And over here, the experience box is adapting to the one next to it right here and it's creating too much space. So that's why we need to create that um, side one and side two. So let's go back to here and I'm just gonna click control Z till it all comes back. Okay, saving it. And now here's the difference. So now they're all their own size, kind of like how Flexbox did it. And we didn't have to do any like, you know, stretch or minimizing or anything like that. So it looks a lot better. And obviously we're not keeping it like this with this um, color in the background. I'm going to delete that just in case people are joining right now and thinking that that's what the design looks like. So yeah, this is what it looks like. And I um, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Um, we do have to go start packing and leaving for our flight. We're going to visit family. So um, yeah, check it out on CodePen if you guys want. Um, I do post all of my projects and everything on Twitter and um, and YouTube. I also have my own YouTube channel that I've been posting on there too. Um, no, there is no backend or database or anything like that. Um, that's what Dennis does. I'm just doing front-end development. Uh, Dennis does the backend stuff, so he would have to be the one that you want to ask that or learn that with. Um, you could add external style sheets, like for, you know, for the read more, we can create another HTML and CSS sheet and it could link out um, from this. And um, obviously adding the links into these, but yeah. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go. Thank you for joining me for the stream. Hope that it was entertaining and that you guys learned something and um, let me know if you guys did in the comments or if there's anything I can change. Have fun.